So since the derailment, residents have been diagnosed with ailments associated with chemical exposure and rail workers at the site have fallen ill. Y'all, this is more serious than they are even talking about on the news. Now, mind you, I'm reading this on a news outlet, but they are not really talking about this. It's like they don't want it out there at all. Derailments is a loose term. That could just be one wheel off the track. Yet another train derailment on another day in another state. Right when the CEO of Norfolk Southern is set to testify in front of Congress. That seems really coincidental. At what point do we not just ask what's going on with Norfolk Southern, but to wonder and question are there sleeper cells that's doing something, tampering with the tracks or tampering with the trains? And you can call it conspiracy theory all you want, but it's something that needs to be asked. Last year in 2022, there was this thing going around and they were calling it quietly quitting. People are quietly quitting. People are quietly closing their stores. Well, what about quietly at war? Because with everything that's going on, it will be so easy to get someone to get someone into the United States and start doing damage. We see what's going on with our power plants, our substations, our water treatment facilities being tampered with. When do we ask the question, could someone possibly be doing this? Is this intentional? Or is it just all coincidental? Let's talk about it. What's up, fam? Welcome back to Tommy Bites TV. Thank y'all for being here today. Well, tonight, this late video, you guys, this happened actually this morning, but I was out traveling and could not get to do this video. For those of you who were wondering, I did go get tested and I am negative for everything. They tested me for COVID, for flu, for RSV and nothing. So it has to be this early pollen and allergy seasons in my sinuses. So let's get into the story. So I'm doing it now in case you have not heard. Norfolk Southern has had another train derailment and this time it is in Alabama hours before the CEO was to testify before Congress. Before we go any deeper into the video, please guys help this video out. Get to more people. Hit that like button. It is totally free 99. Subscribe to the channel. Become a cousin. Turn on your notifications because sometimes I post more than one video a day. So let's get to the story. 30 cars derailed Thursday around 6.45 a.m. in Calhoun County, Alabama. There were no reported hazardous leaks. No reported. You got to read in between the lines. The article reads, a Norfolk Southern train derailed Thursday in Calhoun County, Alabama. Hours before company CEO Alan Shaw faced lawmakers to answer questions about the February 3rd derailment that led to a toxic spill in East Palestine, Ohio. The train was traveling from Atlanta to Meridian, Mississippi, when it derailed at around 6.45 a.m. in the Quad City area of White Plains. There were no reported injuries and no reports of hazardous leaks after approximately 30 cars derailed. The Calhoun County Emergency Management Agency said in a news release, no reported hazardous leaks. And you may wonder why are you keep emphasizing no reported hazardous leaks? Because you have to now take their words and read between them. Just because it's not reported doesn't mean it's not happening. You see what I'm saying? So it's how people word things and then they come back later and go, well, it also reads Norfolk Southern has responded and is working closely with us. An agency spokesperson said in a statement, Norfolk Southern has their cleanup crew on site 
and there is no estimation on how long it will take. Well, of course, there's no estimation on how long it's going to take. They're still working one in Ohio. Not that they don't have different crews, but they haven't even said to Congress when they were asked, you know, well, when do you think this will be finished? All they could offer up is, well, we intend to help with the cleanup. No, you need to handle the whole thing is what you need to do. And you need to pay those people pain and suffering. You need to pay them for their property values probably depreciating. But they said they couldn't commit to those things. As of right now, it is not clear what caused the derailment. Connor Spowmaker, a spokesperson for Norfolk Southern, said the train was mostly mixed freight and that two of the cars had previously carried hazardous materials, most likely a solution used in water treatment. At the time of the derailment, those two cars were empty. So they were empty of those chemicals, but doesn't mean that it wasn't any residue there. Read between the lines, you guys. I will also leave a um, clip of the video where the guy from Norfolk Southern is talking in actual footage of the train accident in just a few minutes. Hold on. Hit the like button, but hold on. Let's get deep into it. This, however, is the third derailment of the company's trains since last month. When asked about the frequency of the accidents, Spellmaker told reporters that Norfolk Southern is looking into what happened and is figuring out how we can better be safer at what we're doing, basically, is what he said. I guess they ain't figured it out yet because they still have an accident, huh? Derailments are a very loose term, he said. Derailment could mean as little as one wheel off the track. So as far as an increase, decrease, I can't really get into that. You know what? He full of bull. How dare you try to be condescending by saying derailments is a loose term. That could just be one wheel off the track. Well, every time I see one of these derailments, it's more than one. Over the weekend, 28 cars derailed in Springfield, Ohio. Officials said the 212-car train was headed to Birmingham, Alabama from Bellevue, Ohio when it derailed at around 5 p.m. Saturday. Craig Barner, Norfolk Southern's general manager, general manager of operations, said, said that none of the derailed cars were carrying hazardous materials and there were no reports of injuries. He said the train was previously carrying diesel exhaust fluid and an additive commonly used in wastewater treatment. One of the cars that derailed contained plastic pellets that spilled out onto the soil. Ohio Environmental Protection Agency Director Ann Vogel said the pellets are not hazardous. The National Transportation Safety Board launched a special investigation of Norfolk Southern Railways organization and safety culture following a series of derailments and other significant accidents. And that announcement came just hours after the railroad said a conductor had been fatally struck at an Ohio Steel facility. I ain't hear nothing about that anywhere. So, a conductor had been fatally struck at an Ohio Steel facility. So now they have launched a special investigation into Norfolk Southern. Why somebody got to die for y'all to figure this out? A report by the board said that a defect detector built into the railway transmitted an alarm message to the train's crew after it recorded that the temperature of the wheel bearing on the 23rd car was 250 degrees hotter than the air temperature. Anything over 170 degrees requires the engineer to stop the train. <sighs> Y'all, this is just ridiculous. This is just ridiculous. So it's a lot going on. I don't know if it's shortage of, you know, labor shortages. I don't know what's happening. I don't know if they're cutting back on doing their checks, but something got to change or more people are going to die. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm so stopped up right now. Five toxic chemicals were identified around the site of the East Palestine crash. Five toxic chemicals. But wait, 
Wait, wait, wait. Didn't they tell them people they had nothing to worry about? This is okay. So since the derailment, residents have been diagnosed with ailments associated with chemical exposure and rail workers at the site have fallen ill. Y'all, this is more serious than they are even talking about on the news. Now, mind you, I'm reading this on a news outlet but they are not really talking about this. It's like they don't want it out there at all. A number of lawsuits have been filed against this company. Y'all, but yet they still are able to operate and still have accidents, just one today. So until somebody in their family or somebody that's high ranking and make a lot of money gets injured or their family member gets injured, then maybe they'll do something about it. Until then, we're all disposable. For those of you who are new to my channel, I did a video on this three weeks ago. I'm just going to show you a quick snippet of what took place three weeks ago with Norfolk Southern. They don't care about these people. I promise you. That bottom dollar is all they care about. Agents. The question now is, what are the effects to the environment? So the derailment has caused concern about air, soil, and water pollution. On February 10th, the EPA said that about 20 rail cars were reported to have been carrying hazardous materials. Chemicals including vinyl chloride and other ethers were also known to have been and continue to be released into the air, the surface soil, and surface waters. They lied. They told those people to go back to their homes. Everything was fine. Even though those people kept telling them, my animals are dying. I can't breathe. I can't drink the water. My skin is breaking out. My throat, my nose, my eyes are inflamed. And now those people are sick, including their own workers, are sick. And they can't even commit to paying down the road medical care for those people. That is just wrong. On February 12th, the EPA, after monitoring the air, said it had not detected contaminants at levels of concern in the around East Palestine, although residents might still smell odors. Working with management agency, the EPA had screened the air inside about 290 homes as of February 13th and said it had not detected vinyl chloride or hydrogen chloride, which could cause life-threatening respiratory issues. In addition, 181 homes were still awaiting screening as of February 13th. So even though they're saying that they have not detected it, they are still worried about it because of all of these different chemicals burning and mixing and mittens into the air is causing pollution. And those are dangerous chemicals that will cause respiratory issues. So fearing an explosion, the authorities performed a control release of the toxic materials from five train cars tankers on February 6th. And the contents were diverted to a trench and burned off. So to end this article, Norfolk Southern CEO Alan Shaw testified Thursday in a hearing of the Senate Environment and Public Works Committee. He said that he was deeply sorry for what happened in East Palestine and is determined to make it right. We will clean the site safely, thoroughly, and with urgency, he said. You have my personal commitment. I really hope they have your personal commitment because those people are going to need help, not just now, but down the road. And that is why the question was asked of him today. Can you commit to saying that you will pay for medical care for these residents years from now because apparently they're going to need it. He could not commit to that at that moment. He could not do it. This is just a sad case. So that's it for this story. Thank you guys for joining me tonight. And I will see you guys tomorrow with another video, probably more than one. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to Tommy Bites TV and Homestead. Turn on your notifications so you know when I upload a video. Hit that like button so this video can go out to the masses. That's the only way YouTube will push these videos. They need you. I need you to help me 
help you and help others. Period, poo. <laughs> so, y'all, pray for these people. Pray for anybody involved with Norfolk Southern. Even the employees are getting injured, are, are being killed. This is serious. And why it's not being covered the way it needs to be, they'll show a few minutes and then they move on to um, something else. I don't know. Train headed from Atlanta out west, derail, uh, about 37 cars looks like the count as of now. Most of those cars were just carrying mixed freight, and two of those cars were uh, what we call a residue hazardous material car, which means it previously carried a hazardous material, as described by the DOT. Um, those were residue cars because they do not have a load in them. Uh, they do not breach. There is no hazardous material leak. There is no risk at all to the public. Do you want to ask the public to stay away? It's a big operation with a lot of heavy machinery, a lot of heavy equipment, and a lot of guys trying to be out there working as safely as possible. We appreciate people staying away, and we'll be happy to keep you all updated as we can. Norfolk Southern, we're, we're looking at all these incidents as we look at any incident that happens and figuring out how we can become an even safer railroad. Rail transportation remains the most safe way in this country to transport any type of material. As a federal uh, you know, common carrier, we're required to carry these things that help move America's economy. Of course, doing them safely is our number one priority. So we're cooperating with every investigation, every agency involved to find what those things are. And community members should know that that's, that's what's happening. We're, we're looking to become an even safer railroad. And though these incidents are receiving a lot of coverage right now, which makes sense, and I'm sure they have a lot of questions, it's totally reasonable for them to have that question. Safety remains number one priority, and we'll make sure that